I think it was a constructive summit. And um, beyond the uh, technicalities and very complex uh, Euro speak, if one wants to present this in a very simple way, uh, one could say that the European Union, with uh, this decision, hopes for the best, but is also prepares, it prepared for the worst. That's what we're having now. We have a deal, we have a, a way out that clears the horizon and allows the British Parliament to decide on their next step. I felt I detected amongst the leaders, perhaps in sorrow, but a realism that a no-deal Brexit could be a reality. First of all, you have President Macron when he arrived mentioning it. You had President Tusk saying it was one of the options. There seems to be a reality that this is no longer academic. It could actually happen. Well, uh, a no-deal Brexit has always been one of the possible outcomes of this very sad process. Um, this uh, is something that no one can exclude. As far as we are concerned, we have been working now for, for months to prepare comprehensive contingency and preparedness plans that would allow the 27 to cope with the very many negative uh, uh, consequences of a no-deal Brexit. It's there. <coughs> Even after the summit, a no-deal Brexit is one of the possible options. But look, I mean, what can we do? Uh, we are the partner who stayed behind. We, were needed, we didn't leave. It's the United Kingdom that opened the door and left. So there you have it. On the second option, which uh, this, the second option is assuming that the the, um, the deal fails next week, the second option gives until April the 12th for valid reasons, but it gives the opportunity for the prime minister to come back with another plan, a new idea, a better uh, because we know that Parliament is having indicative votes. What would happen from the Commission's or from the EU's point of view if that if she says right? The deals, no, we now want to go with Canada Plus or Norway Minus or something like that. Uh, if uh, the second option is to be activated, the 12th of April uh, track, uh, before uh, the content of any possible outcome, uh, the European Union would expect a notification by the United Kingdom announcing their intention to organise European elections in May. This is why the date of 12th of April is part of the decision, because this is the last possible day according to which the United Kingdom can start trigger the preparations for the European election. So step one, if this option is to be followed, we need to have in a letter a very clear indication that elections will be held, European elections will be held in, in Britain. Accompanying that letter, one would expect also another request on, on, on a possible extension request, an additional extension request, and on the reasons behind it. So I don't now want to speculate on what possible reasons would accompany this uh, uh, letter, but uh, let's see. But is the end April the 12th? The answer to this question is yes, if there is no deal approved by then, and if the United Kingdom does not indicate to the European Union by that date their intention to hold European elections and request an additional extension. That's, that's the answer to your question.